Okay, first thing we start out with a pumpkin. This should be a cooking pumpkin if you can get it, because uh, they usually uh, turn out better. Some pumpkins are, are really bred just to be jack o' lanterns, so they don't have as good of a taste, and sometimes you actually really can't even use them. Some of them uh, you would find would be a little stringy on the inside, and um, you can't uh, cook them. I mean, no matter how much you cook them, the strings will not go away. So, you have to, if you can get a cooking pumpkin, that's always best. But even if you want, uh, even some jack o' lanterns, so some, uh, but usually there's the smaller ones, the larger ones usually aren't in some. Cooking friendly, like I said. Now, one thing you can do with the seeds is keep them. You can also keep these, dry them out, and then plant them next year. Some of the genetically engineered pumpkins, you know, like I said, the jack o' lanterns. I don't know if you can still do that with all the seeds because you can't do that with everything anymore. Some things are made. Uh, you can't do that. You have to buy the seeds from the seed company every year, but we'll, we'll see. You can always try it. And it'll work or it won't work. Okay, then you're going to have these pieces like this. You need to get these strings out as best you can. And this, there's nothing to do with the strings except throw them in the garbage. I mean, I don't know if anything else compost pile. Maybe that would be about the best you can do with these strings. Okay. Then you wash the pumpkin pieces really well. And I would cut them up. I would cut them up in, you know, manageable pieces. I'd wash the outside as well as the uh, inside part, and then you would put that with water in it. We're going to put all the pumpkin pieces in here, get it all cut up, and then we're going to boil that like we would potatoes. Just keep, just boil it until it is soft enough, uh, like with a fork, that uh, you could, you know, that it's soft. Just cook it till it's soft, like a like a potato. Now the skin's never gonna get soft. It's just the inside that we're looking for. We're gonna take the skin off of it. Now back to those pumpkin seeds. You see, I um try to get all the pieces of pumpkin on there. What I think I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna keep part of them, some of them. See if I can plant them and if they might grow next year. We'll find out. And let those dry out. Those seeds dry out and those ones I'm just gonna leave them alone and next year maybe I'll try planting them. Just let them dry out. Hopefully they keep them out in the air so that they don't get moldy because that's a possibility if you're not careful. Okay and then I'm just gonna put them in the bottom of a pan. Like a cake pan or a cookie sheet would work too. I, um, I like olive oil, so I'm just going to use some olive oil, but you could actually use any kind of oil and just kind of sprinkle it on there. And then mix it all up. Try to uh, then get a nice flat layer of seeds so they're not like on top of each other. So they're nice and flat. Get a little pumpkin in there. It's not as big of a deal now because we're going to cook this and eat them anyway. Okay. And then after you get that done... We're going to sprinkle them with salt. Um, this is kosher salt. You know, you can use regular salt if you want. I just like having a little few, few, fewer chemicals in the salt. The kosher salt's a little bit better than uh, table salt. It's coarser. That's why it's coarser. It doesn't have the chemical in it that uh, causes the salt not to cake. So it's one less chemical in it. Okay, and then we're gonna put these in the oven for about 350, three, about 350 degrees. And just leave them in there until they start turning brown. Then you get, and the warm pumpkin seeds are really good. And uh, poke a fork. You can poke a fork through the pumpkin easily like that, then you know it's done. And so what we're gonna do now is we're going to remove the pumpkin from the shell. Now you can do this before you cook them, I'm telling you, it's a lot harder. What you do it here is you just take a spoon and you just cut it out. It's really easy. And this is still pretty hot, but you can see how easy that is. 
And then you throw this bit away. Okay, now I have all my pumpkin. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to smush it. Just to make it easy, I'm going to use this potato. We should have got a bigger bowl. I'm just going to mush it up. Just so that it's easier to measure out. Now what you can see, this is quite a bit of pumpkin. It's just from one small pumpkin. So you're probably going to have more than you need. And one thing that I do is with my excess is I put it in little plastic containers, you know, like old butter, uh, well, butter as much as yogurt type containers uh, that have lids on them. And I just put, I measure it out so that I know exactly how much is in the container. And then I put it in the freezer. And, uh, you know, with a lid on it good. And then I can use it for, uh, for you know, whatever I want later on. And it's already measured out, so I know I just take it out of the freezer and let it thaw out, and that's how much I need for my, for my bread. Okay? So I was just kind of mushing it up. Okay, there's quite a few ingredients in this, so I always have to write this one down. Um, but I'm going to start out with the two, two thirds cups of butter, and I melted it a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to add to that two and a half cups of flour. I want to mention to you is that I wrote, I made this recipe, I really did, um, for uh, fresh pumpkin. So if you used canned pumpkin, it's not going to turn out. Um, you, have to, you have to do something to the recipe, I'm not sure exactly what, but for some reason canned pumpkin seems to have a different consistency to it. So it uh, just doesn't work. So anyway, for this recipe. So let's get the half cup. And this is for two loaves of bread, too, by the way. So if you wanted one, then you have to cut it in half, of course. Okay, two and a half cups of baking powder. Or, no, teaspoons, I'm sorry. <laughs> two and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Baking soda you gotta be careful of. Baking soda can clump. I've had the unfortunate experience of making a cake and then by hand to do some baking soda. Uh, anyway. Okay, uh, about one and a half teaspoons of salt. I'm just gonna dump some in. Um, two thirds cup of sugar. Two-thirds cup of brown sugar. And the brown sugar, of course, you know you pack that in. Like you, you fill the cup full of sugar and then you kind of pack it in there so that um, when you dump it out, it keeps the shape of the cup. That's because brown sugar um, gets air in it and it uh, doesn't measure out evenly. Um, I just mix this all up for a minute. Can I get that all mixed together first? So then four eggs. The eggs turn this into something a little bit more easier to work with. Now, for the spices, um, let's see, we're going to use lots of cinnamon. When I say lots, I'm just going to sprinkle a good amount on there so it covers it up. Quite a bit. And 
and a little bit of ginger. So ginger, I would just kind of sprinkle it there like that. Um, nutmeg. Again, we want a little nutmeg, so I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit in there. And allspice. And you know, I used to think that allspice meant like it was like a bunch of spices mixed together. It's really not. It's its own spice. Uh, again, you can just put a little bit in there. But it is good. And we're making two loaves of bread, so we're going to use two cups of... And like I said, what I'm going to do with the rest of this is I'm going to, I'm going to put it into containers cups each of them and put it in the freezer. Okay. And you put it into a prepared pan. What a prepared pan is, it means that you've taken butter and, and smeared it all over the sides. And then you take flour and you just put some flour in it. Just a little bit. And you do this so that it gets the whole... And then I'm just going to stick the flour in here because we have flour in the rest of it in here. And then I'm going to put it in the oven at 350 for about one hour. 